Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. As you can tell, we are both social distancing ourselves from each other. But either way, this is Three Up, Three Down. We're talking about those hot and cold comic book market trends for the week, starting with that Three Up portion. And we are talking about Three Jokers. Yes, we kind of talked about Joker last week, but this is a little bit different. We're talking about Three Jokers, especially I'm a huge fan of Jeff Johns. Really looking forward to this. But tell us more about it, Jack. Well, last week when we were talking about the Joker in general, um, we were highlighting all of the various reasons. That Plus, you Joker. tricked us to so you tricked me to talk about punchline. This is really true, but we were talking about all the things that have the Joker spiking, um, and we have even more reasons now with uh, the rumors that Matt Reeves' Batman movie may feature the Joker. But um, what has happened last week is one of the reasons, since last week is one of the reasons that we highlighted the three Joker storyline has become increasingly talked about within the comics community. And this has caused some specific back issues to start spiking that weren't necessarily spiking when we were originally talking about it. These were books that were starting to get on people's radar but hadn't hit the prices that they're currently hitting. And the two books are um, the DC Rebirth one shot. Now this is been this is a classic book. I wonder went like what six printings? Yeah. In with different covers. Some amazing covers. Some really, really great covers. They actually, I think, Brian recolored the second cover and then realized, like, I don't think it sold well. And then they realized, okay, we need to change that. And then you started to get like the Wally West panel. But the key one is the fourth print because the fourth print depicts the the three Joker um, kind of reveal on the cover, uh, which is, uh, you know, not a first appearance, but that cover appearance um, of what seems to be leading up to an iconic story. And then we've got Justice League 50. Now, this is a high printed book. This was part of that dark side war. This is when Grail first appeared that storyline coming off of the heat of a free comic book day issue um issue 50 though is when batman discovers that there is this three jokers um that book has heated up so that book is seeing sales of around 12 to 15 dollars which you have to understand is very solid for a book printed as high as it is and a book that i actually had been picking that book out of dollar bit um, I love that whole Dark Side War. M- me arc. too. And and full disclosure, you know that I, I when I resell books, one of the strategies that I implore is putting sets together. Dark Side War sets do very, very well. You can get a good premium on your Grail first appearance. That's one I bought in floppies, I bought in trade, and then turned around and bought the omnibus. Yeah, and it, it is it, again for any of you who haven't read that story. If you're looking for a good Justice League story, that story is excellent. Um, and Jason Fabok's art is phenomenal and consistent, very consistent throughout. So the next one we're talking about in the three up portion this week is DMZ. This is a book that caught heat a couple of years ago, and we saw it catching heat again. And there's kind of a particular reason, although it's kind of stalled out right now, right, Jack? Right. So now. With DMZ, this is a book that's had ebbs and flows. When you're talking about creator-owned type properties, and I say type because this this one's a little different. This is a Vertigo title, um, and it's a Vertigo title from 2006. But this is always one of those books that gets talked about by people who have read the series. They really love it. I have never read the series. It's always been one of those ones that I, I'll see the trades discounted at conventions and things like that, and I've thought about grabbing it for whatever reason, hadn't gotten to reading it, um, was not shocked that it got optioned. Because again, it, it, it's, it's one of those like classic um, it, it kind of indie comic series of the last 20 years. You're talking about a, say, uh, think American Civil War II. Um, DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone. So to give Yeah, it got idea, optioned originally in like, what, 2011 or 12, somewhere around there? Right, right. Um, so this is one that has had multiple, like, heater points and i think people have gotten desensitized to it it's on the hot list because copies have started selling but i was actually expecting to see copies sell for more because the books actually sold for more during hotter periods but you know you're seeing sales anywhere from 15 to 25 dollars for the book so you know for a 
HBO television show, which is what this is. That the reason that this is book is starting to sell is because uh, every mainstream news outlet is reporting the Key Collector app has it. I don't want to say it's an alert because I don't know what of their notifications um, that of the semantics. You know, don't mess that up. Yeah, yeah. Of the uh, of the news, um, but they've reported the news. So the pilot episode is finished. Uh, this show is going to feature Benjamin Bratt, Rosario Dawson. Um, it's an Ava DeVegney production, if you're not familiar with that name. Um, she recently did the Netflix series about the wrongfully accused uh, African-American young men from New York uh, who were imprisoned for years and years and years and then um, exonerated. She has done A Wrinkle in Time for Disney. Um, which was- <laughs> That's not a good accolade. Well... But it's a Disney movie. It's a Disney movie. And that's what hooked her in with Oprah. So she is kind of like become Oprah's kind of go-to director. She's also the one working with Tom King on New Gods. So she will be the director of New Gods. And I think that she is a really, we've talked about her on the channel before as it relates to New Gods. Um, She's a big comic head. And I think that she's going to be important going forward because she seems to really have a passion for wanting to tell these um you know, graphic novel stories in cinema. And being that she's a very respected Hollywood um, kind of like up and coming power director, and she's a person of color, a female, she kind of is able to tell certain stories um, from a certain perspective that I think is going to allow for some great books to be covered as long as these kind of early ones go well so i'm really rooting for her uh, i think dmz has a lot of potential the next one that we're going to talk about for the three up portion is thundra when i first looked at this i was like jack you spelled thundercats wrong but that's not the case right <laughs> no it's not brian although by the way i must say thundercats is actually moving on the market with some rumors that that property could be in development soon but Thunder right now, we're talking about, of course, the uh, She-Hulk villain. Um, it seems that this is the villain that is tabbed for the upcoming Disney Plus uh, She-Hulk series. She first appears in Fantastic Four 129, and that book is a book that it's one of those books that uh, wasn't a key uh, first appearance, but a book that you could find in bins. Um, that is no more. Um, I would be telling you all out there, hit your local convention. Uh, This this book is probably still sleeping in bins, um, but obviously the convention scene is on pause for the moment. But um, at the same point, I think this is a book with a lot of potential. Uh, I think the She-Hulk series is going to be very big, strong casting rumors that Alison Brie is attached to playing uh, She-Hulk which would certainly get a lot of attention on the series. I'm very interested to see who they would cast um, in this Thunder role to kind of play alongside her. But um, this book is is showing strong sales, up to about $40 in like a VF plus near mint kind of condition. You can see copies online right now ranging anywhere from $15 to about $50, depending on grade. Um, Not a ton of graded copies out there, but I think we're going to see more hitting the market as, you know, since this news has come out, people have sent in copies to get graded, I'm sure. Your local presser has some copies they're working on. Uh, this is a white cover, so this is going to be a tough high grade. Yeah, so definitely be on the lookout for those. There's a bunch of websites with a bunch of back stock that you could be checking out. I know a lot of people aren't getting out as much, and a lot of people are sitting at home, but this is a good time, which we're going to move over to the cold portion. The first one on the cold portion, I think people sitting at home, this might change some of that, but we're, the first one on the cold listing this week is auction listings. I think given the current events, this kind of ties into that where people, you see the stock market was down. Everything seems to be down. There's kind of a, I don't want to say fear, but people are cautious right now, especially with spending money, unless it's on toilet paper, it seems. But either way, auction listings seem to be down, but I'm not going to lie. I've kind of taken advantage of it, especially in the other realm that we like to with uh, sports cards. Um, gotten some great, great deals on auctions, especially when people in those lo- auctions at like, 1 30 in the morning and i just happen to be up but either way what do you think about these being cold jack yeah and i don't think it's going to change brian um that's just me uh i think through this whole situation i think you'll still see books bought and sold i think you'll see a lot of books bought and sold um i think books will get hot as various news comes out about properties i still think some of that is going to happen 
having said that, um, I think where we are going to start seeing some of the slowdown is auctions are always a riskier strategy. Whenever you're listing a book for auction, for it to go for as much or more than what someone would charge and they buy it now. Plus the news cycle is going to slow down since everyone's halting production on all these option titles. It's definitely going to slow down, but there's still going to be stuff um, because we'll still get a lot of publisher news. So the reader buzz pops will still happen. Um, publishers are still working from home. That's the beauty of this industry is you can really do that. Um, so it seems like we're still going to get our weekly comics and the obviously first appearances and things like that. And people are always going to look to put their money somewhere. So it's just going to make other things in the market pop than some other things. But what, what's interesting though, is the concept of an auction, you need to have people going against each other. And the problem is consistently, I have always seen that an auction isn't the, a better I, option for you from a buy it now listing unless you have an item that is so hot the market is changing by the minute and number one as brian pointed out those opportunities or there's are, not a bunch of them listed then right. you have a little bit more so but even out. there i'd rather just put a leverage buy it now um the opportunities for books so hot that you don't have to worry about them and you can put them up for listing is going to slow down as Brian pointed out, because the new cycle will naturally slow down. I don't think it'll halt, but it will slow down. Um, furthermore, uh, what, what we're going to see is I think less bidders. Um, so for me, I wouldn't take the risk on auction right now, but where I'm more excited is the various buying opportunities as Brian pointed out. And, um, I'll, as since you opened the door for it, I'll say it. Um, I've been looking across multiple um, collectible communities. You you see it in toys. You're seeing it in sports cards. You're seeing it in comics. Right. Then moving on into the next one on the three down portion this week, we have CBCS grading. A lot of people. When CBCS first came out, they had a hefty promise. What was it? Two week turnaround time. Right. Then they ran into some plastic issues, some supply issues, some turnaround issues. Then we thought, hey. There's light at the end of the tunnel because Beckett's buying CBCS. I was super excited for it, but I got to be honest, since Beckett has acquired CBCS, I haven't seen any change. I still buy PC books that are already CBCS graded because they're my PC. I like their grading. I think their grading is spectacular, but you hear a lot of CGC has the power in the market. If you're a seller, you're definitely going CGC route, but tell us more why this is cold. Yeah. Um, as far as like, reason it is cold that's going to be kind of conjecture um i you know i think that the market tends to pick one grading company no matter what that market is i've seen that um there's multiple grading the kind of grading goes back to coins um you can always follow the collectibles market um and i have my hands in multiple collectibles markets as i know you do brian um uh, it kind of always follows stamps and coins and then sports cards and then things get around to kind of comics, toys and video games and things like that. Um, so when you look at grading, that's kind of the order things kind of go in. And uh, it's really interesting when you look at the way every market eventually settles on a market leader for grading. And you're seeing that in sports cards where there's like three main grading companies, but there's one that dominantly prices better. Um, and in, Comics, I know PGX would love me to say there's three main grading companies, but in reality, there's two main grading companies, but there's one that just prices better. And it is frustrating for as a consumer because you, you really don't have uh, a lot of opportunity to change that. <laughs> I mean, just the perception out there for CGC just so far outweighs CBCS. Um, and you're right, there was a, there was a moment in time so before we feel too bad for CBCS where they had an opportunity, um, you know, we, you and I used to be involved heavy in the Google plus um, CBSI boards and the guy who owns CBSI at the time, um, Trey Kenyon, who's a host of the collectibles podcast. He was a big proponent in the early days of CBCS. Yeah. They had a buying group for guaranteed nine eights. Right. And I think that that started a lot of, CBSI members who were really frustrated with like the overall kind of 
complacency that it seemed like CGC was showing. And we were all willing to give this new company a try. But one by one, real world business things happened that sort of soured each of us. Yeah, it seems like he tried to go up to bat for him. And yeah. Then he just got mushed in the face. Yeah, it, it wasn't that um it wasn't that we didn't try. And the owner of CBCS, Steve Borak, is is a nice guy. And in reality, I think they have nicer cases in both sports cards and in um in, in comics. But all anyone cares about is that bottom line, um, that that return on investment. And you know, I one book I recently looked at was a Shazam number one from 1973, a nine six. And a CBCS, it sold for $104. A CGC, it sold for $145. I mean, the proof is in the pudding right there, and that happened within a day of each other. And those were auctions, so that was what people were willing to pay. Um, and that is kind of the typical difference you see. But again, we talk about buying opportunities. There are some savvy collectors out there. I see it in the sports card market. I'm seeing it now in the in the comic market who are buying and re-slabbing, especially big dollar hot books, um, because you can get that built-in uh, profit margin by going from CBCS to CGC. And if it's for your personal collection, Brian, I know you're a big proponent of that. Many of us, because we respect CBCS as a grading company, as far as their standards, we we think that the, the books look good. Many of us are more than happy to buy those books for PC. Yeah. Outside of that rivet label, I have no hesitation buying CBCS for my personal collection. Mm -hmm. Not only because I think their grading's on par because it's in my personal collection. It's not going anywhere. What's to say 10 years, 15 years from now, it's not flipped. CGC yep. is shit. Everyone wants CBCS. Yep. Who knows? I'm fine with the way they're grading. I think they did a good job grading. It's just right now, if you're looking for selling, CGC seems to demand, like you just pointed out, top dollar over CBCS books. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that, and I think you make a valid point about it flipping because I mean that's been talked about in the sports card market. What happens if there's a flip, and we don't know because as all of these new people influx into our hobby, we always say the market decides, right? Well, the market changes so as new people come in, the market gets to redecide over and over and over again, and we've already seen the effects of that. Look at what's happened with Hulk 180. And then the last one we're going to talk about in the three down portion this week is Sleeper. Sleeper's been sleeping. Yeah, and I think as everybody prepares for Virus and the free comic book day issue and his upcoming appearance in the Donny Cates run, you're starting to see everybody get excited. Um, and people have kind of moved on beyond that. Their old symbiote. Now, it's important to note before I start getting somebody in the comments go, well, but the second print. Yeah, okay. The second print is going for $75. That is solid all day. Now, that book was going for $100 to $125. So, cold doesn't mean it's not valuable. It just means, you know, we're on the down portion. It's heading down. It's a downward. cold trend. Yeah, it's a cold trend. Um, but I I'll give the second print that I think it's more recession proof of a book because it's a much more limited print run, even with those extra copies that were found in those five packs at Walmart. I, that book is still far less available than the first print. Where we're really seeing the drop off is the first print, a book that was once a 20 to $25 book, now around $5. Um, and now you'll see somebody can say, well, yeah, it's $5 plus shipping in a lot of listings. True, but check out how many of those sellers have multiple copies. You start adding multiple copies into your into your cart and you're not paying $5 shipping. You end up paying five, six, seven dollars a book in total for these, especially when some of these dealers are offering discounts for multiples, 10% off, things like that, all these cool new features that eBay has. So yeah, like tax. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. But, uh, um, you know, that's one of those things where, uh, I don't know if this book will be down forever. I don't have a negative thing to say about sleeper. I still think people are assuming they know where Donnie's going with Dylan and we really don't. Um, and the reality is everything symbiote is of value of somewhat because it always seems to come back around. The reality of the situation is three months ago, if you walked into an LCS and you saw a stack of first host number three sitting on the shelf, you would have been like, 
no way they have these and you'd have grabbed a bunch. Um, now you have the opportunity to get them at that price, essentially cover price. So there it is. That's our three up, three down. And do this a favor, comment down below. What did you think is hot? What do you think is cold? What do you think about these picks? But either way, this is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.